Uh, am I audible and visible to all of you? Please confirm. Yes, you are. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of Microbiology Society of India, West Bengal Unit, I extend a very warm welcome to each and every one of you. Myself, Martina Chakraborty. I'm the state student convener of MSI West Bengal Unit. And I'll be your host for today's webinar on environmental law and justice in India, jointly organized by Dhruvo Chad Haldar College, IQAC and Department of Microbiology and Microbiology Society of India, West Bengal Unit. I would like to welcome all the dignitaries present here today. We are really grateful to have with us Dr. Shotu Broto Shahu, sir, Honorable Principal of Dhruvo Chad Haldar College, Dr. Shopna Mukherjee, ma'am, State President of MSI West Bengal Unit, Dr. Malini Basu, ma'am, Head of Department of Microbiology and DCH College and State Coordinator of MSI West Bengal Unit, Madam Shudok Khina Shain Gupta, IQAC Coordinator, DCH College, Sir Shamul Banerjee, Academic Coordinator of DCH College, and our Honorable Speaker of today's webinar, Advocate Kollol Basu, Sir, Calcutta High Court, Ex Standing Council of Pollution Control Board, West Bengal. And we also have Dr. Aim Deshmukh, Sir, All India President, MSI. Thank you so much, Sir. Thank you for joining us. Thank you to all of you for taking out time from your busy schedules and joining us on today's webinar. It really means a lot to us. We all know why we have gathered here today. It's to observe the World Environment Day. A short history behind the day. The United Nations Assembly established the World Environment Day in 1972, which was the first day of the Stockholm Conference on Human Environment. Since then, the World Environment Day is being observed on the 5th of June annually to encourage awareness and environmental protection. This webinar will definitely add values to our lives. And since the topic is environmental law and justice in India, I believe this, is, this will definitely stimulate our growth as responsible citizens of India. Now, I would like to request Dr. Aim Deshmukh, sir, All India President of Microbiology Society of India, to say a few lines here. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm very happy today to talk on this occasion. Today is the 5th June. And on the 5th June, Environment Day is there. And the topic you have selected is a really excellent topic. There is a need to review the laws in environmental science and whether there is a perfect justice given to the society. There are many laws. Water protection law is there regarding waste management, solid waste management, regarding medical waste management, and very recently, in 2009, one law is framed by Central Pollution Control Board is regarding electronic waste management. So today, on this occasion, you will discuss more on the various laws and the most appropriate topic is a justice given. So I wish all the best to your department and specifically Malini ma'am she is constantly in touch with me and uh, arranging this excellent program to create awareness among the students and teachers i wish all the best to this program as a president of microbiologist society thank you thank you Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for your valuable time. We really appreciate that. Now, I would like to request Dr. Shopna Mukherjee, ma'am, the state president of MSI West Bengal Unit, to enlighten us with her wise words. 
Over to you, ma'am. Ma'am, are you there? Well, probably we have some network issue with ma'am. We will definitely go back to ma'am after a few time. Then, may I ask Dr. Sh Satyabrata Shahu, sir, the Honorable Principal of DHC College, to share a few lines with us and encourage the students present here. Please, sir. Good afternoon. My dear students, respected teachers, honorable speaker and distinguished participants. I feel honored to welcome you in the webinar organized by Department of Microbiology and IQSE of Chubachand Haldar College in collaboration with Microbiologist Society India, West Bengal chapter, in collaboration, in celebration of world environment day firstly i would like to convey my sincerest gratitude to dr swapna Mukherjee, state president msi west bengal coordinator of this webinar who acknowledged our initiative and extended his helping hand to organize this webinar in collaboration with us it is my pleasure to welcome a. M. Mr. A. M. Deshmukh, President MSI, who today joined with us in this webinar. I would like to convey my thanks to Martina Chakraborty, who hosted this webinar. I would like to offer my thanks to Dr. Malini Boshu, head of the department, Department of Microbiology, Subhachand Haldar College. Convener of this webinar and Professor Sudokhina Shengupta, Coordinator, IQS Shidrupachand Haldar College, and all other members of the organizing committee for their sincerest effort to organize this webinar. I feel honored to extend my warm welcome to Mr. Kollol Boshu, Advocate, Calcutta High Court, and ex standing counsel of. Pollution Control Board, West Bengal. We are very much fortunate that Mr. Boshu has consented to deliver his valuable lecture on environmental law and justice in India. He's a person of great distinction and of high eminence. We are very much grateful to him. The concept note of today's webinar is very much relevant to the present time. The lecture is focused on environmental law and justice in India. We know that World Environment Day is celebrated every year on 5th June globally. It is a day on which we spread awareness about the environment and the need to con conserve it. The progress of mankind is accompanied by a massive increase in the exploitation of natural resources from climate change and marine pollution to the depletion of flora fauna environmental issues have only increased with each passing decade we are running out of time to save our planet using the resources available in the earth to maintain our current way of, way of life and nature simply cannot keep up with our demands. So it is essential to advocate for a greener environment and conservation of nature. It is quite simple as when we conserve the environment today, the future generations will be able to lead a healthier life. We cannot be so selfish and use up all the resources for ourselves. World Environment Day is the perfect opportunity to make people aware of the issues we are facing and how one can contribute to saving it. Thus, it is quite important in its own way. 
I wish a grand success of the seminar. I am sure all of us will feel enriched with knowledge at the end of the lecture. I welcome you all once again to the webinar and hopefully next hour will be very much beneficial and enjoyable for everyone. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for explaining the importance of the day and today's webinar and the topic, the relevance of the topic. Thank you so much for doing that, sir. Now, I've seen that Shopna ma'am has joined again. So I would like to request Dr. Shopna Mukherjee ma'am, the state president of MSI West Bengal unit, to enlighten us with her voice words. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Martina. I got disconnected midway. Uh, anyway, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Respected Dr. Deshmukh, sir, our All India President of Microbiology Society of India, our chief guest and speaker, Advocate Kollan Boshu, uh, Dr. Shottabrata Shahu, uh, Principal of Yuvachad Haldar College, Dr. Malini Basu, uh, Head of the Department of Microbiology of this college, uh, other dignitaries, faculty members, and my dear students. I welcome you all to this program on behalf of Microbiologist Society of India, West Bengal Unit. Mm, I really thank the organizers of this uh, of uh, Department of Microbiology of Jugo Chadhaldar College uh, for taking the initiative for uh, this collaborative program. As Martina has already mentioned, and Dr. Shahu and Professor Deshmo that we are celebrating today World Env Environment Day. Uh, but tell me frankly one thing, how many of us sincerely think about our environment? Uh, when I grew up, uh, Kolkata was not so hot in summer, but now uh, sitting in front of this laptop or this program in this sultry afternoon, we are in sweat bucket and no respite likely in days ahead. Uh, so we know now, now today's biggest problem in the environment is the climate change. Our earth is warming, there is water shortage, loss of biodiversity, and lack of waste management. Uh, we know that environment is changing, at least the educated people, we know. But frankly speaking, do we care? The answer is no. But why? because we always think that something big some big movement has to be done for saving our environment but I'm, but i'm telling you especially to the students that think of small changes in life you could make save water don't waste food and consider the world environment the word environment in broader spectrum this uh, involves hygienic atmosphere which being a microbiologist you should take care and ecological balance uh, as dr shahu has mentioned that there are many laws in this regard professor deshmukh was also saying um, as uh, environmental protection has become great concern for human existence environmental laws regulations policies many of them are there but effective enforcement of various laws for environmental degradation is absolutely necessary i think the environmental problems of today whether it is air pollution water pollution or ozone depletion or land degradation deforestation anything destruction of ecosystem all damage our natural environment and especially life on earth which is very important i take for example uh, there is a threat to mangrove forest and wildlife we kolkata people are also in danger uh, in india we are fortunate that our constitution encompasses right to life as a fundamental right uh, we hear about various environmental justices are being done but what is this? Why is environmental justice important? What are the types? We don't know. We read in the newspapers about the national green tribunals, 
uh, we know that uh, there are sitting five places new delhi bhopal pune chennai and also in our kolkata uh, which are and we know that national uh, green tribunals uh, comprised of a judicial body um, uh, for uh, for the purpose of uh, adjudicating environmental cases in the country but why this is there we really don't know i think today's speaker our esteemed guest uh, advocate kollol boshu will highlight all these uh, aspects so without any more words i am moving on to the next part i welcome you all again and thank you very much thank you so much ma'am thank you for your presence thank you for your valuable thoughts now i would like to request professor shudok kina shengupta ma'am the iqsc coordinator of bch college to share her thoughts on this topic with us thank you very much uh, for this um, for the opportunity that i have been given and uh, very good afternoon to all of you our respected guests our guest speaker advocate kollal boshu respected principal sir my colleagues who have joined this webinar and of course my dear students we know why we have gathered here at this point of time because today is 5th june world environment day and on this very day it is our duty to spread awareness and uh, about mother nature and the need to protect her from being mutilated by us every day especially by us the human beings so there has been you know uh, so much of desecration of our precious environment over the last few decades that uh, many of the natural resources are practically uh, have exhausted and resources which cannot be replenished by us however much we try so it is our duty to advocate for a greener environment and its conservation at the same time we have to combat the pollution air pollution global warming deforestation uh, forest uh, wild fires in the forest etc etc and all other phenomena which are usually associated with the desecration of our environment of our nature if we protect nature if we conserve nature today then our future generations shall be helped they will be able to lead a happier and a healthier life so the onus is on us on us we are living right at this moment in this view in this very beautiful planet it is our duty to save the environment and by environment i mean everything the natural resources the different kinds of species and of course the humans also but at the same time you know we are all human beings and we have this habit of not listening to others so unless and until something is thrust upon us we don't think about it and this is the point where laws are needed and thankfully there are environmental laws now but in most of the time we find that these environmental laws are on paper and they are not uh, uh, made into practical use so they are not used properly so uh, we have with us uh, advocate kollal boshu who will be speaking about the environmental laws in details now in more general but the point is that we have to abide by the laws and we have to take care of the environment and we have to protect our mother nature since i am a student of literature i always associate environment with environment with mother she is a mother figure to us and in this context i cannot help reading out a few lines from one of rudyard kipling's poems it's a very beautiful poem and um, i i will just read out a few lines so that you know we can all of us here present here can get the hang of it the poem is named the way through the woods 
they shut the road they shut the road through the woods 70 years ago weather and rain have undone it again and now you would never know there was once a path through the woods before they planted the trees it is underneath the coppices and heath and the thin anemones only the keeper sees that where the ring dove broods and the badgers roll at ease there was once a road through the woods yet if you enter the woods of a summer evening late when the night air cools on the trout ringed pools where the otter whistles his mate we fear not men in the woods because they see so few you will hear the beat of a horse's feet and the swish of a skirt in the dew steadily cantering through the misty solitudes as though they perfectly knew the old lost road through the woods but there is no road through the woods so the roads are all lost now there are hardly roads left uh, in between the trees in the woods in the jungles so on this special day let us all assemble and pledge take a promise take an oath that we shall try our level best our utmost in whatever capacity we can in however ways we can to make this world a beautiful place a much better and a healthier place thank you thank you so much ma'am thank you for reminding us of the duties we must perform to save the environment in order to protect our future generations in order to protect our own survival thank you for adding much value to that seminar by reading out the beautiful poem thank you so much for that now may i request sir shamul bondopadhyay the academic coordinator of dch college to share a few words with us over to you sir good afternoon everybody uh welcome to dr deshmukh president of esi uh, uh, msi dr satyabrata sahu our principal dr sapna mukherjee state president msi and dr malini bosu head of the department of uh, department of microbiology dhruvajan haldar college first of all i should mention that uh, this is a great of great opportunity for me to uh, share this platform with all these dignitaries and on this very uh, auspicious day this is the world in environment day and this day is being observed globally so at this point of time we are actually globally connected so this is a great opportunity in that sense also next one is that uh, so far as this topic is concerned environmental law and justice in india i think according to my own way that being a student of economics i know that economic development social development is the thrust of for every society and every society have tried to grow and develop but while growing every society has exploited the environment knowingly or unknowingly they have exploited the environment to a great extent but now it is the question has been raised that whether this growth and development is sustainable or not and this sustainability of growth and development economic and social growth and development has become a condition of sustainability of environment 
that means if the environment is not sustainable then the growth and development which we are achieving or we have achieved may not be sustainable therefore this sustainability of en environment is a much discussed topic nowadays though that topic is very important but today's uh, selection topic selection that is the justice environment needs justice kallol bosu sir is here he will explain who will give this justice because environment as per our general conception environment is poor we do not face much resistance from the environment while going to exploit environmental resources then who will stand by the environment who will give the justice to environment the question is a million dollar question so i think today's webinar will show some path through which today's development planners social planners will find some ways some new ways to use or exploit environment so that sustainability of development as well as sustainability of environment can be ensured thank you i wish a great success of this webinar thank you all thank you so much sir thank you for your words um, as sir mentioned that the environment directly impacts all the aspects of a society be it economical be it social all the aspects and to achieve the goal of sustainable development we must protect the environment we must protect our nature mother nature so without any further ado i will turn the time over to our speaker our speaker today is advocate kallol basu calcutta high court ex standing council of pollution control board west bengal and a little reminder before we start if any of the students if any of you have any question during the presentation you can just put it down in the chat box and i will definitely bring them up after the presentation and we will definitely have a short q and a session after the presentation so now over to you sir thank you good afternoon everyone at the outset i convey my deepest gratitude to all of you i am quite fortunate and quite privileged to have this august audience in front of me the today's topic is environmental justice now before i venture into the main course i know that all of you know but at the cost of tiring repetition i say that the term environment has been defined in the act of 1986 popularly known as environment protection act 1986 this act says that particular section of the act that is environment protection act 1986 that environment includes water air and land and the interrelationship which exists among and between water air and land and human beings other living creatures plants microorganism and property since i am not the students of microbiology but i think it may be a very foolish idea that microbiology must be related with microorganisms and microscope also with the advent of microscope the subject has been developed possibly i may be wrong in tell it's a common sense micro because the ultimate thing is that this particular environment is talking about the interaction between the all living organisms and while defining the termed environment it says other two important things that what is the environment pollution and also what are the environment pollutants when the, it talks about the environment pollutant 
it clearly says that it means any solid liquid or gaseous substance present in such concentration as may be or tend to be injurious to environment that means it says in no uncertain terms that the interaction between all living organisms whether they are prejudiced they are suffered they are damaged by reasons of presence of those gaseous solid or liquid substance in such concentration which tend to be injurious to environment now the other part is environment pollution it says that the presence in the environment of any environment pollutant that means the presence of gaseous liquid and solid substances some of the speakers previously has said just few minutes ago that june 72 the convention was taken place and this was 6 june 1972 when mrs indira gandhi was the prime minister of this country she had represented the india and apart from india there were other 113 countries and they had formulated certain policies why i tell you this because after 14 years the parliament of our country had arisen from the deep slumber after the most tragic incident in bhopal in the year 1985 the law namely environment protection act 1986 was engrafted the court normally says that parliament is presumed to know the minds of the country presumed to know its own land parliamentarians are accountable to parliament parliament is accountable to the country all of us must know one basic thing in law that people of india are the custodian of the constitution constitutional means constitutionalism means governance as defined by sarvapalli radhakrishnan in 1950 when i say that we the people of india our students who are present today they were not included in the we the people of india at the time when the constitution was drafted and promulgated but subsequently by reason of judicial decision and different laws all of us have been included in the constitution in the term we the people of india that means all the people of india so the question is it's a constitutional ethos and possibly professor mukherji had said that article 21 yes it is a fundamental right of a citizen and the court is obliged to protect the citizen of this country wherever and whenever the fundamental right is injured it is the duty of the court and it is the duty of the state as well to protect its citizen and accordingly the supreme court while interpreting article 21 in the context of constitutional values or the environmental values it says in no uncertain terms and very specifically rather i must say that it says it people have a right to live with dignity people have a right to live in a healthy environment these are the two major pillars of the environmental jurisprudence that every person has a right to live in a healthy environment and live with dignity it is not just like an animal existence i i would request you to answer me only one question how many of us here understand bengali everyone then i will tell you a story that was written by one of the famous doctors at 
once upon a time i will i am forgetting his name possibly he is dr shurit boshu mallik or dr pallab boshu mallik he said uttar kolkatar gorpare ekta choto school chilo shei school e onek chhele mei porten shoshtho shreni chhatroder master mashai jiggesha korlen tumra je rasta diye asho তোমাদের কোন গাড়ি দেখতে সবচেয়ে বেশি ভালো লাগে একটি ছোট্ট ছেলে উত্তর দিয়েছিল স্যার ট্রাম দেখতে ভালো লাগে মাস্টার মাসে অবাক হয়ে জিজ্ঞাসা করেছিলেন এত গাড়ি থাকতে ট্রাম কেন রে তখন ছেলেটি উত্তর দিয়েছিল স্যার একটা লাইন ধরে চলে এই যে লাইন ধরে চলার মধ্যে একটা ভালো লাগা থাকতে পারে সেই ভালো লাগার মধ্যে ছিল একটা শৃঙ্খলা আর সংযম এই ছেলেটি বড় হয়ে একজন আন্তর্জাতিক বাঙালি হয়েছিলেন যিনি অন্তর্জাতির মধ্যে বিরাজ করছেন এবং যার আজ জন্ম শতবর্ষ সেই মানুষটার নাম সত্যজিৎ রায় এই শৃঙ্খল আর সংযম এটাই সভ্যতা কারণ বিজ্ঞান আর আইনের মধ্যে একটা পার্থক্য হচ্ছে অথবা মিল হচ্ছে বিজ্ঞান সবসময় অবান্তর প্রশ্ন থেকে সঠিক জায়গায় যাত্রা করেছে অর্থাৎ ইটস আ জার্নি ফ্রম ইম্পার্টিনেন্ট কোয়েশ্চেন টু পার্টিনেন্ট আনসার আর আইন কি করেছে আইন করেছে যে একটা রক্তপাত একটা ব্লাড শেড অ্যারাইজিং আউট অফ অ্যাঙ্গার তাকে একটা আর্গুমেন্টেটিভ প্রসেসে এনে তাকে একটা পিসফুল সলিউশনের দিকে গেছে বেসড অন এভিডেন্স ইট ইজ নট আ ফেইথ অন এ উইদাউট এভিডেন্স আরেকটা কি পার্থক্য বিজ্ঞান বলেছে যে থিওরি অফ আনসার্টিনিটি একই সময় একটা বেড়াল জীবিত থাকতে পারে মৃত হতে পারে একই সময় আমরা বলতে পারবো না একটা কণার গতিবেগের অবস্থান এবং গতিবেগ তা কি করে আমরা নির্ণয় করব এই যে ধরুন একটা থিওরি অফ বা প্রিন্সিপালস অফ আনসার্টিনিটি এটা কিন্তু এরেনা অফ সায়েন্সকে এনলাইটেন করেছে পৃথিবীকে উপকার দিয়েছে কণা বলবিদ্যা যাকে আপনারা মেকানিক্স বলেন অনেক কিছু আবিষ্কার করতে সাহায্য করেছে কিন্তু আইন বলেছে না দ্য রুল অফ আনসার্টিনিটি শ্যাল নট বি অ্যালাউড টু প্রিভেল বিকজ ইট উইল অ্যানাথামে টু দ্য রুল অফ ল ইট উইল ডেস্ট্রয় দ্য রুল অফ ল দ্যাট মিন্স আইনের অনুশাসন ভেঙে পড়বে যদি আমরা কোনো জায়গায় পৌঁছতে না পারি একটা মিল বললাম একটা অমিল বললাম এনভায়রনমেন্ট জুডি স্টুডেন্টস বেসড অন সার্টেন প্রিন্সিপালস India had basically no laws worth mentioning. 1974 Water Pollution Control Act 1974, the parliament has legislated. 1986 Environment Protection Act. 1992 Public Liability Insurance Act. And thereafter, all these solid waste management, hazardous substance handling, chemical substance handling rules all are under the aegis of environment protection act 1986 this act specifically enjoins a duty upon the government and the west bengal pollution control board vis a vis the central pollution control board what are their duties to perform the indian constitution according to my perception is among the few in the world that contains specific provisions on environment for the environmental protection we have in the constitution a directive principles of state policy which starts from article 36 it is ended with article 41 these directive principles of state policy are normally not enforceable in the court of law only the state can legislate law on the basis of the principle engrafted in this uh, article these constitution our constitution says that there are fundamental duties chapters explicitly enunciate the national commitment to protect and improve the environment and judicial interpretation has strengthened this constitutional mandate the supreme court 
intervene to protect forest life wildlife from the ravages of mining in and around different places different sanctuaries more particularly i am remembering the sariksha sanctuary in alwar district of rajasthan many years ago there was a judgment in the supreme court delivered by the supreme court which was fought out between tarun bharat singh and union of india in that particular judgment the supreme court has said a very very important thing which must be noted by all of us subject to correction regarding its relevancy i think it is relevant a great american judge emphasizing the imperative issue of environment and said that the judge has placed the government above the big business individual liberty above the government and environment above all that means when there is a conflict between the government and big business house the interest of the government shall be placed higher than that of the big business house when there is a question of individual liberty and conflict between the individual liberty and the government the court must come and protect the individual liberty but when there is a conflict between government business house citizen and environment the environment must be placed above all and the issues of environment must and shall receive the highest attention from this court that means from the supreme court that was a very revolutionary utterance according to my humble knowledge of law i know nothing virtually but so far as my some little experience is concerned and my little understanding that this observation of the supreme court was absolutely the need of the hour and supreme court rose to the occasion you see that the law letters of law never ensure justice banglay bolte gele ami ebhabe kotha ta bolte pari je aine rakkhor bichar ke sunishchit kore ni ekjon bicharok er nirman tar chhele bela tar samskar tar panditto ebong tar merudonder jor ei charer samannoy ekta bichar nirman hoy je karone amra mahabharata dekhechi अंध राजा जो अंध स्नेह पागल तक तर चोक बाधा अंधश्री कृष्टिहन हम दर्शनहीन हन राजा के लोकतंत्र उपदेश दिए अपराधे सन्तान के सजा दीते अन्न के दिवना से विचार बोध से विचार बोध एक अनुच्चारित कान्नार जंत्रणार अनुरण लोकनायक अंतरे प्रवेश करान एक इच्छा छो अंध अहंकार क्षमतार जो दम्भ एवं अंध पुत्र स्नेह तरटाई से दिन ग्रहीगृहत है आवेदन हारिए गए किंतु तरह फले राज्य बाजे तेमी पृथ्वी जलज उद्भिद श्यावला पोकाम गाच ये सब ही दरकार आज मानुषर जो ना आविर हत पृथिवीर प्रकृत किस जाए आसतना कंतु मानूष अतिशर्य और दम्भे अहंकार सर्वश्रेष्ठ हिसाब से मेने सीमाहीन लोभे ताके व्यवहार कर आज के क्यों प्रकृति तरह प्रतिशोध निच्चे वन मैन इज गाइडेड ब्रिड एंड ब्लैडेड by myopic profit hunger the nature is bound to retaliate that is a very simple equation which we need to understand now i will go and explain the certain principles of environment law environmental law on which the honorable supreme court has rendered justice between the parties and pronounced judgment which still holds the field there are certain principles of law upon which the entire environment jurisprudence evolves around first 
every person has a right to wholesome environment. That is the first declaration under Article 21 of the Supreme Court, which is reported in Virendar Gaur versus State of Haryana, 1995, Volume 2, Supreme Court Cases, page 577. Second, the Honorable Supreme Court said that enforcement agencies like the Government Pollution Control Board, Central Pollution Control Board, they are under obligation to strictly enforce environmental laws. Suppose you have seen that in your locality an industry has been established but they are without any license granted by the West Bengal Pollution Control Board under Section 21 of the Air Act, meaning thereby they do not have consent to operate and consent to establish, but they have started production and you people are affected by certain discharge and or emission, water or air pollution. So you can make a complaint to the Pollution Control Board to the chairman and to the member secretary that see that this particular industry is operating without being armed with the license granted by you under the specific act. Now, the Environment Protection Act and the Air Act and the Water Act, it mandates that you have certain duty under the law to protect the citizen from being harmed. So you kindly discharge your duty in accordance with law, in accordance with the mandate of statute. That is why Supreme Court said that enforcement agencies are under obligation to strictly enforce environmental laws. This judgment was delivered by the Supreme Court in the matter of Indian Council for Environment Legal Action versus Union of India in the year 1996. Very important judgment. See, many a times governments come, suppose a powerful industry house, they are, they are operating certain industries which are absolutely polluting industries. Polish authority, government, none are paying their heads to the complaint. Everybody is maintaining angelic silence. Now you file a case. Now government comes. Government sometimes says the Supreme Court said that stringent action to be taken against contumacious defaulters and persons who carry out these industrial works, development activity for profit without having any regard to the environmental laws and norms, then stringent action to be taken. You were damaging, destroying the wetland for the sake of any kind of development project, then you have to suffer. Next, the power conferred under the environmental statute, that means Environment Protection Act 86, Water Pollution Control Act 74, Air Act 1981 may be exercised only to advance environmental protection and not for the purpose that would defeat the object of the law. Suppose firecrackers, 100 decibel or 100 decibel, the Pollution Control Board is empowered to reduce the decibel limit if it finds that this particular decibel limit would cause severe damage to the mental and physical health of the citizen. So any action taken under the Environment Protection Act, not it is Air Act, because sound passes through the air. If there is no air, then question of spreading sound cannot and does not arise. That is why in the year 1987, the 81 Act was amended and sound pollution brought into the definition of the pollution accordingly and historical a historical judgment was given 
in Anil Kumar Ray in 2005. This was a very heart rendering event. A 14 year girl was raped. His clamor, his agony, his affliction was suppressed under the sound of firecrackers. She made a maragel with a cheat card. She took a shunte pelona baji ravaje. Utshabe rudogro mejaje, ecti shishu jacket horshon kore maraholo, action engineer onil kumar, shambhavo to amatic monopotina, the baba, then is supreme court of Amla Kodem. Uitia she cry in re onil kumar. Ebong shabdu dushon at a bhayankor apurat. Protect Manushi actor Nijano de Thakar Udikarachi. Right to be left alone. Right to be left in a noise free world. Right to maintain privacy. These are all rights, valuable, precious rights, guaranteed under Article 21 of the Constitution. Supreme Court, High Court is bound to protect these rights of the citizen. But today's world, this is the world manipulated, dominated by the political leaders and businessmen. Only the constitutional court are the last shelters. But the laws are adequate, not inadequate. Courts are there. And these environmental laws, and more particularly the environment jurisprudence, is one of those branches of law which requires a very intimate friendship with the all branches of science. Bigane Protek Shahashate Puribesh Bigan Nai Puribesh Aine at a Bundu to the Hadar Karachi. Karani at a Shamai, the Hane Ain Judi Biganeshate Bundu to Nahore. The whole ecological limit and financial development, growth, equity, Shigulamra Buste Parabona. There was a world when there was an environment versus growth. Now this is a world, environment with growth. A sustainable development. Then we need to understand the ecological limit, development, physics, chemistry, mathematics, biology, everything we need to know, we need to understand. Otherwise, we cannot make the journey a complete one. And the last, the brilliant proposition of the environment jurisprudence is the doctrine of public trust. It is a doctrine which we borrowed from Roman jurisprudence. It says that the state is the trustee of all natural resources, which are by nature meant for public use and enjoyment. The public at large is the beneficiary of the seashore, running waters, air, forest, ecologically fragile lands. These resources cannot be converted into private ownership. One of the most important chapter in the jurisprudence and jurisprudential trial. And our system under Indian federal system, the environmental power is shared between the union or central government and the 26 state governments. Part 11 of the constitution governs legislative and administrative relations between union and the state. The parliament has the power to legislate for the whole country, while the state legislature are empowered to make laws for their respective states. And there are certain entries and schedules and chapters in the constitution which authorizes the state and central legislature to make different laws on environment. And this country has adequate laws nowadays. So the principle which I have said, I tried to be as precise as possible, although I do not know much, but still I, what I have gathered from my experience in the Korean combat. I am a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a 
যে ছটা বা সাতটা প্রিন্সিপালের উপর গোটা পরিবেশ আইনটা দাঁড়িয়ে রয়েছে কেন্দ্রীয় সরকার রাজ্য সরকারের পরিবেশ আইন উনিশশো অনুযায়ী কিছু দায়িত্ব আছে পলিউশন কন্ট্রোল বোর্ড সেন্ট্রাল পলিউশন কন্ট্রোল বোর্ড তারা হচ্ছে আপনার এনফোর্সমেন্ট এজেন্সি তাদের কিছু দায়িত্ব আছে সেটা হচ্ছে পরিবেশকে রক্ষা করার দায়িত্ব এটা মাথায় রাখতে হবে এরা যদি না করে তাহলে আপনারা ন্যাশনাল গ্রিন ট্রাইব্যুনালে মামলা করতে পারেন যদি পলিউশন কন্ট্রোল বোর্ড আপনাদের কোনো বাজে অর্ডার দেয় সেই অর্ডারের ভিত্তিতে আপনারা এয়ার অ্যাক্টের থার্টি ওয়ান অনুযায়ী সেকশন থার্টি থার্টি ফোর কি থার্টি ওয়ান অনুযায়ী আপনারা অ্যাপেলেট অথরিটি আছে পলিউশন কন্ট্রোল বোর্ডের পাঁচতলায় সেখানে আপনারা অ্যাপিল করতে পারেন সেখানে যদি আপনারা মনোমতো অর্ডার না পায় ইফ ইউ ডোন্ট গেট অর্ডার্স ফ্রম দি অ্যাপেলেট অথরিটি ইউ ক্যান প্রেফার অ্যাপ্লিকেশন বিফোর দি এনজিটি ন্যাশনাল গ্রিন ট্রাইব্যুনাল নাও দিস ইজ মাই আন্ডারস্ট্যান্ডিং অফ ল which i have tried to explain and i hope that i uh, communicated myself as clearly as possible thank you very much i uh, express my heartfelt gratitude to all of you for enduring my boring lecture for last half an hour thank you so much sir thank you for your valuable insights i'll just check if there is any question in the chat box or not or if you have any question you can just ask it here if any of you so before that since you are here and uh, it's the world environment day so i do have a little query to ask sir uh, actually sir a few days back i went through a headline called it said california court protects bumble bees by making them fishes okay so i uh, try to read a more about that and it said that the california's endangered species act it classifies endangered species as birds mammals fish amphibians reptiles or plants but it leaves insects out of the equation so what they did they classified the bumblebees legally as fish in attempt um, in an attempt to protect the species from extinction but sir don't you think that amendment would be a better idea like if amended the act might uh, protect the other insects important pollinators in future but instead of that uh, by classifying some insects as fishes doesn't it seem like a solution without a proper vision so you are not audible concerned. i am concerned with our indian jurisprudence and constitution and that is why at the outset i explained the definition of environment and which includes all species all microorganisms all living creatures yes, it does not specify so far i could understand your point that you are referring to a law and or legislation which is applicable to california yes sir but indian laws are very specific and it covers it's a complete code it covers all little thank you sir i would request you to type your question here so i can just bring it up here because you are not audible properly in the meantime i would like to request all the participants to fill the feed up uh, feedback link there and uh, only after the submission of the feedback form you will get the participation certificates in your mailbox if you have any question please ask that possibly there are none madam so it seems like that you have covered everything no. there uh, so uh, i i tried to elaborate the entire A gamut of jurisprudence and it yes, covers sir. all ranges subject to correction and possibly uh, these are the principles on which the entire jurisprudence stands and now the different provisions of the law that can be applied in a different fact and circumstances but the basic issues or the pronouncement of the supreme court the which i've said 
these are the six or seven principles which covers environment air water everything and the enforcement agencies are the pollution control board and that's all um thank you sir thank uh, you may i, may I secure leave happen. madam may i secure kind leave uh surely sir thank you sir thank you for joining uh, us and thank you for the time it sir. is my thank privilege you, also thank huh? you sir uh, all right thank you sir now i would like to request dr malini basu ma'am uh, the hod of department of microbiology of dch college and state coordinator of msi west bengal unit to convey the vote of thanks over to you ma'am mm, thank you martina uh, since the speaker has already left but just to have a completion to the uh, normal protocol uh, quickly a very good afternoon to one and all everyone present for joining us today uh, in this afternoon of uh, sunday uh, but on this special day the 5th of june uh, so a very heartfelt uh, gratitude to the um, people who just cooperated with us immensely but i just want to mention the way i got in touch with this um, with our ever speaker like uh, he, um, my uh, brother who is no longer but uh, the legacy that he has left behind like we are, i got in touch with um, um, advocate vikash ranjan bhattacharya uh, our uh, ex um, i mean uh, city mayor uh, whom i contacted and then he referred this name so i am extremely thankful to him and also to the speaker uh, advocate basu for taking his time out i miss the i mean busy schedule for us to at least come i mean uh, memorize this day uh, this special day at least from the environmental point of view and as conscious citizens students faculty and all so our my heartfelt gratitude to our principal sir uh, dr shotobrot shahu um, uh, professor deshmukh sir M A msi president uh, all india our state president dr shapna mukherjee Uh, our IQBC coordinator, Madam Shudokhina Shengupto, our academic coordinator, Sir um, Sri Shamul Bondopadhyay, so, and all the students, all the faculty members from DCH College and also outside for being with us at, uh, for in this afternoon. So hope to see you once again on this some special occasion in the coming year. Thank you all. Thank you, Martina and Shamporko, for the last minute. uh hands on with me for the last few issues so thank you all and see you once again okay thank you so much ma'am it was such a great opportunity to be yeah. here today it was really great and uh, i would like to thank all of you once again for being here today for joining us in this webinar and for your glorious presence that's what made this webinar really great success thank you all and now we would like to conclude the webinar thank you thank you once again please fill up the forms for the certificate otherwise i won't just i, I would not be able to close the link rather may i take the leave now ma'am sure 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 yeah, yeah. thank you i'm just thank waiting you. for the uh, filling up the link yeah okay ma'am thank you ma'am
I'm just uh, putting an end 